Hey everybody, it's Chris here. It is April 17th, 2023, Zone 5 interior of British Columbia, and it is time to plant some seeds. So, my rule of thumb is after the first full moon in April, I plant the cold weather seeds, and that works well for me in Zone 5. And after the last full moon in May, I plant my hot weather seeds. And again, that seems to work really well here. I don't transplant little baby plants at that time. I'm only sowing seeds, so just to clarify that. So again, that's after the last full moon in April, sow your cold weather seeds, and after the last full moon in May, sow your hot weather seeds in zone five. Just a timing tip that seems to work perfectly well, but I always find after the full moon, there's a shift in weather. So if you watch for that on your calendar, wherever you are in your regional zone, perhaps if you're in a warmer zone than I am, perhaps it's March and April. Um, maybe that you want to go by. But here in Zone 5, that works awesome. So we're going to get busy today and we're going to sow those cold weather seeds. Those are things like carrots, beets, onions, uh, brassicas, lettuce, spinach, etc. And another good tip for you gardeners out there is watch your garden, if you've previously had a garden that is, watch for seeds that are going to self-germinate, self-sow. So things like if you've had dill go to seed or cilantro go to seed, perhaps you've had uh, spinach or lettuce or something like that go to seed or any of the mustards, the brassicas, they will self-sow very readily. And if you watch for that in your garden and you watch for the natural seeds to start germinating, that's a great indication that it's safe for you to plant those similar things.
So I don't cover the carrots after I've sown the seed. I'm just going to sprinkle them with some water and that will cover them with all the soil that they need. Carrots are a really small seed and they don't want to be covered with too much soil or they will not germinate. So that's an important thing to remember about carrots. Carrot seed is also part of the parsley family and they are notoriously long sprouters. So be patient, it will take one to two weeks at least for your carrot seeds to germinate. Okay, so I'm here at the onion and garlic bed. This is where I just grow onions and garlics with the exception of snow peas. And I've got a little pea trellis behind me and I've already sown the snow peas. I planted them last week when I planted my potatoes. It is tradition to plant potatoes on Good Friday. So that is what I did. And now I'm going to be sowing some onion seed. Here I've got a really quick finishing leek, just put that for you, and some early yellow globe onions. So I'm going to be seeding these two varieties and then I'm going to be transplanting a bunch of onions later on, probably next weekend. We'll see what the weather's doing. Right now it's about five degrees Celsius at night which is fine for seeding onions, um, but transplanting is a bit of a different thing. This is a sprouting broccoli, so it comes really early. It's cold hardy. An Italian head broccoli. Early snowball cauliflower. I am trying my luck with the snowball variety again. The seeds have not been germinating well for me for the past couple of years from multiple seed companies. And the Romanesco cauliflower. I love this cauliflower. It's so pretty. Uh, give it a try if you haven't. If you have not heard of this company, you should really check them out if you live in British Columbia. It's a seed co-op, BC Eco Seed Co-op is what it is called, www.bcecoseedcoop.com. So quick tip with broccoli and cauliflower, give them lots of space, they like to get Big. Don't over sow these ones uh, unless you do intend on just harvesting them for microgreens which is totally delicious and cool but give them lots of space and totally feel free to inter sow with something like snowball radishes or uh, um, those Japanese turnips that come really quick. So something like that that's a 30 day crop that you can interplant and inter sow with will be a great companion plant and something for you to utilize this space better with. All right, so next I've got some cabbages. I will also be doing some cabbage transplants, but I'm also gonna sow some from seed. This is a great way of making sure that you have something. It's a little bit of insurance.
Here are some brassica seeds, and I believe these are a red mustard that I had in this area last year, and it has self-sown and come up a couple of days ago. So brassicas are ready to germinate. just filled these buckets up with some compost and a little bit of mulching wood chip mixed in to lighten everything up. I'm going to add some bone meal. And we're going to put some basil seeds in here. So homegrown, home saved basil seed. Smells delicious, just like basil. If you let basil go to seed, it's also a nice pollinator. So I'm in the old cold frame here and I'm gonna sow some spinach and this is a red spinach or a spinach like plant i've never grown it before it's going to be an experiment for me so i think that'll be fun say I sowed about 10 to 15 spinach seeds in that little hole there. I'll definitely uh, thin them out and enjoy the little baby plants. Ooh, and those seeds look cool. So I'm just in front of the compost heap back here and I've got a, a nice long garden bed to grow up and cover the unsightly mess that uh, is so necessary to the garden though. Um, but I thought I would put some delphinium in. It's a perennial. It's a really good pollinator. Hardy zones 2 through 9. So I figure in zone 5 I'm just about right in the middle. It should be good here. Uh, never grown it before but it looks beautiful. And then I'm going to put in some more of my um, homegrown basil here. So hopefully we'll get a nice herbal uh, pollinating garden to cover this compost.
So two last bits of work for today's gardening. I've got an oyster mushroom log that has been soaking overnight in water. I've already harvested a couple of um, harvests of the oyster mushroom off of that, growing them in my kitchen on the counter, and it worked fabulous. I was super happy. But I was told after two or three flushings that the log would be spent. And now I'm going to disperse it in my garden. So this is going to be a fun experiment. You can see under the boat there, I've already dispersed the remnants of a chestnut mushroom log. So over here, right next to it, in and around these four potato buckets, I'm just going to disperse some of the uh, inoculated mushroom wood pellet. And from what I understand about mushrooms, there will be a dominant culture. So either the oyster or the chestnut will take over. So we'll see which one wins. And hopefully we will have mushrooms that naturally will uh, cultivate and thrive in this garden. That would just be amazing. And the second other little bit that's going to go behind these barrels, we clipped out and dug out a bunch of Oregon grape bush that was really in terrible shape around these buckets. So what we're going to do is plant this mullen here. And this is a mullen stalk. It's full of seed from the natural area. It's indigenous to our area here. Mullen is a great medicinal herb for respiratory health. Good for tinctures, good for um, probably all sorts of things. I'm not sure. Teas, infusions. So we're going to try to cultivate that just on the borders of our garden um, and see if we can get this beautiful wild indigenous plant to uh, cultivate itself here with a little bit of help. So that is what I'm going to be doing here. Wow, here's some oyster mushrooms that uh, I guess grew underwater. What? <laughs> so mushrooms don't like direct sunlight and this area of the garden is quite shady, especially in July and August and the later parts of um, the fall, of course. Just the angle of the sun doesn't get over here very good. But I always have a ton of meadow mushrooms that grow in and around here, which that's what gave me the idea to try to grow some um, gourmet mushrooms. So this is like seeding mushroom around your garden. This is the equivalent of what that is doing. And a mushroom log is made out of pressed wood pellets that have been somehow infused or inoculated with the mushroom spores. This was done by a local grower in our regional area by the name of Frosty Hollow Mushrooms out of Salmon Arm, BC. So now I'm just going to take this stalk of mullen and disperse it.
Just helping out Mother Nature. Okay, so now I want to cover this area with a little bit of wood chips, so I'm going to go get uh, a wheelbarrow load. Alright, so I'm back with a load. It's actually half dirt, half wood chip, but nevertheless, I'm just going to cover loosely uh, the mushroom spores and hopefully the mullein seeds and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, that about does it for today. I've gotten the garden work that I wanted to accomplish done. We've got some early cold weather season seeds sown, um, some experimental mushrooms sown, and we'll see what happens with that. I'll keep you posted, but thanks for joining me today, and happy gardening.